Howdy y'all, Dr. Islam here, board certified gastroenterologist trained at the Mayo Clinic. We'd love to be a partner for you in improving your gut health. Visit us at gastro.com for more information. We can see you today, whether in person or telemedicine. You don't need a referral, come see us. Let's get your gut taken care of and find out what's going on. Now, today's video is gonna be a game changer. We're gonna talk about the five most common myths that I see when it comes to gut health and the real truth behind them. Some of these myths are so widespread that even doctors believe they're true and health influencers repeat them without realizing how crazy and out of whack these ideas really are. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll know what is fact, what's fiction, and what to actually do if you're confronted with these health myths. Now let's dive into these myths and break them to give you the truth about what's going on with your gut. Myth number one, fiber fixes all constipation. This is so common, but also so frustrating for my patients. Have you ever seen a doctor and complain about your bowels and all they tell you is eat more fiber, have more fiber, fiber will fix you. This is 100% without a doubt, one of the biggest myths that I see when it comes to gut health. Now fiber for sure is a foundation for a lot of things. It is the basis for us to build our gut microbiome. I truly believe this, but not all fiber is the same. Let me repeat. Not all fiber is the same. Not only that though, but not all fiber works for all individuals. So for example, if you have issues with constipation or you have IBS-C, constipation predominant, adding more fiber, it's gonna make you feel worse. I, you've seen this, I've seen this in my patients. When you're constipating, you add more fiber, that fiber ends up just fermenting more into your abdomen. But the more fermentation you have, the more bloating, distension, and in fact, the more constipation you can have as well. And in fact, we are seeing more and more studies that a certain subtype of bad bacteria can actually produce more gas and adding more fiber to that will actually produce more gas and actually make you more constipated. So it's not a matter of having the right fiber, it's having the right fiber in the right condition in the right amount. So what do you need to do? Well, make sure you have the right fiber that's there. The fiber you wanna aim for is soluble fiber. That's the fiber that you want and typically it has a term called psyllium in them. This is the best fiber to get things going and to get things flowing. Number two, go low and go slow. The recommended amount of fiber you should have is between 25 and 40 grams. It does not mean you should have that all at once. So titrate low and take your time and eventually titrate up to that. Number three, try to incorporate food as fiber as much as you can because not only are you getting the fiber, you're getting the benefits of the added nutrients, vitamins and minerals as well. And then lastly, consider adding fiber supplements. I typically recommend synthetic fiber supplements like, like Citrusil or Benefiber because you don't typically have the bloating side effect for this. But keep in mind, fiber is not a vacuum in and of itself. You need to make sure you do everything else on top of that, including making sure you have enough water to form that gel to allow the fiber to work because fiber without water is just a whole big old rock. Also consider adding magnesium or glycinate to your diet. These are gentle but effective laxatives to get you going and flowing. Next, focus on gut motility. Let's include doing things like walking, abdominal massaging, even stress management. All this affects the motility or the contraction of your gut. But also keep in mind, this makes a difference when it comes to having more fiber. Then try to include other fibers like acacia fiber or guar gum, which are also fantastic, gentle fiber that I recommend for a lot of my patients. Myth number two, acid reflux means you have too much acid. Now this is all over social media and I hate this because patients come to me obsessed about their acid count. I got too much acid, I got too low acid. What is going on with the acid? Let me break down this myth. The acid reflux that you have, it's not an acid problem. It is a valve problem. It is a door problem. The reason you have acid reflux is because the door between the esophagus and stomach is open longer and more often. That is, caused the, that is called the lower esophageal sphincter. When that door is open, it's like having a door open anywhere. All that acid is gonna go up into the esophagus it's caused the burning, regurgitation, and pain. So the whole goal of treatment is to do what we can to close that door. It's not to stop the acid, it's to close that door. It's not a too much acid problem. Whoever tells you this has literally no idea what they're talking about. So what can you do? We have to find ways to close that door. So that includes things like weight loss. Losing weight will cause that door to be closed longer and more often. Lying down and sleeping on your left side, that will cause that door to be closed. Making sure you don't lie down immediately after you eat because when you do that, that keeps the door open. 
fixing a hiatal hernia that keeps the door open longer and more often. And then adjusting foods because the foods that you eat will trigger the door to flop open because of the fermentation that occurs. Now, sometimes we can do everything that we can and the door will still open. And this is where acid-reducing medications come into a play. Now, not everyone who has acid reflux needs to be on acid medications. I'm not saying that, but it does help out. And that's why it's very important to talk to your doctor about what your goals are when it comes to therapy. Because we need to figure out, A, can we get you off acid-reducing medications? B, are you one of those individuals that must be on it because of a medical condition? Or C, can we consider other supplements or the lifestyle changes to get you feeling better? So have this conversation with your healthcare provider so you know exactly what your goals are when it comes to treatment. Myth number three, a normal colonoscopy tells you that everything is fine. Now this is very frustrating for a lot of my patients because they go through a colonoscopy prep to find out what's going on. It ends up being normal. They're like, oh my God, I went through all this and it's all normal. Is it all in my head? No, 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 no. So here's what a colonoscopy does. It allows me to see if there's anything bad going on. So polyps, cancers, ulcers, Crohn's, colitis, maybe even diarrhea as well. And so it helps me to rule things in and rule things out. It's a very important test because not only can we find precancerous polyps, but it allows me to kind of at least figure out what the next steps are. So even a normal colonoscopy gives me great information because with that, I can tell you, you don't have Crohn's, you don't have ulcerative colitis, you don't have colon cancer. It allows us to at least rule that part out. But there are a lot of things that the colonoscopy cannot allow us to see, including things like leaky gut, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Sometimes even food sensitivities, even other causes of diarrhea, even Crohn's disease may not be fully seen on a colonoscopy. So even if your symptoms are still there with a normal colonoscopy, that's okay. We may need further testing to find out what is going on. So I don't want you to be frustrated by a normal colonoscopy because for me, that's still great information because it allows me to rule things out, but also to rule things in as well. Myth number four, probiotics work for everyone. Now, let me just go into a spiel here. The probiotic industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry that's gonna make you think you need a probiotic or a supplement. So let me give you this spiel here. We don't have a lot of good evidence that probiotics work, especially when it comes to a pill form. We actually don't. Now you may have friends who've noticed they felt better and you yourself may have noticed you felt better as well. And that's great for you. That's not the case for everyone. And so everyone comes to see me. One of the biggest questions they ask me is, hey, Dr. Rislam, what probiotic do I recommend? But it's never a one size fit all. And it's never a, a part of the regimen if you don't do the hard work first, meaning you cannot probiotic yourself to health. You can't supplement yourself to health. If you have a crappy diet, if you sleep bad, if you're full of stress, if you, you know, you're just not doing the things you need to get done, there's no single probiotic that's gonna make you feel better. Now, if you've done all that, it may be a cherry on top of that that can help you out, but if you don't do the hard work, you're not gonna feel better. So you have to change your diet. You have to eat right. You have to have fermented foods. And if you can have more probiotic foods into your diet, that is much, 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 much better than having some sort of simple probiotic pill to make you think you're gonna feel better. The truth is, is that every probiotic's different. Every person's different. There's not one probiotic that's gonna make a difference for you if you don't do the hard work already. I'm always of the opinion, food over pills, food over probiotics, food over supplements, food, food, food. Do that first. And if you do that, then you can maybe consider adding a probiotic on top of that to see if you feel better. But if it doesn't work, that's okay. It doesn't mean anything is wrong. You just may be somebody like the normal population in which probiotics don't work and that is perfectly fine. Myth number five, a juice cleanse will detox your gut. I see this, I see it all over, everywhere, that you need some sort of cleanse to detox your gut. Let me tell you the truth here, man. If you have a kidney and you have a liver and you poop at least sometime, your body is already detoxing itself. You don't need to do anything else. I don't know why people are obsessed with this whole detox culture. I, 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 there's something about social media that's making you feel like you have to detox all the time. If you have a kidney, if you have a liver and you poop and pee, your body's already doing what it needs to do. It doesn't need to do anything else. You don't need to add on to that. And certainly a juice cleanse is not a way to detox your body. This literally is not how anatomy works. And what juice cleanses do is that they make you feel like you're starving yourself because you're not actually getting nutrients. And you may not even realize this, but you incorporating juice cleansing and maybe being hungry can actually slow down your metabolism and actually make you gain weight. Your body is really, really smart. 
There's been billions of years of evolution. And if your body comes to realize, hey, I'm not eating real food. I'm having just juicing. I'm just not getting the nutrients that I need. I'm going to slow down because I worry that out there, that there's not enough food out there. So I'm going to store as much fat as I can. So you actually may be making things worse for your gut than anything else. Here's what I want you to do instead because this is nature's way to detox. Number one, eat a variety of plants and vegetables. The diversity of plants in your diet predicts how well your gut microbiome is. And so the more diverse plants you can incorporate into your diet, the better your body is gonna give you the ammunition to detox and help itself. Number two, prioritize fiber in a smart way. I talked about this earlier, but, the fiber, but fiber is the foundation for gut health. If you don't have the right fiber in the right person, in the right amount, you're gonna set yourself up for failure. So prioritize fiber, but have it in the right way. Number three, make sure you hydrate, drink water. Water is nature's best detox. Better than energy drinks, better than any cleanses, Simple water works. Number four, sleep well. Your body needs sleep. In fact, sleep is one of the biggest things you can do to help detox your body. The less sleep that you have, the less quality sleep that you have, the more inflammation, the more, the more change in your gut microbiome, the worse elevation of toxins in your body occur. So sleep is critical when it comes to detoxing your body. If you're not sleeping well, there's no, there's no amount of juice cleansing that's gonna make you feel better. Manage stress. If you're stressed out about everything, there's no detox that's gonna make a difference. So find ways to manage stress. I go for a walk, I exercise, I meditate, I pray, I hang out with friends, I have family time. These things work because it takes my mind off from stress. We all deal with stress every single day, but you have to find a way that manages it best for you to get you feeling better. And lastly, have fermented foods. Have foods that are good for you. Minimize the foods that are not good for you. The bad carbs, the sodas, all that crap. That's not good for you. That's going to make things worse for your body. That's it. If you do that, your body will detox and you don't need to do anything else on top of that. So there you have it, the five myths that I busted today. If any of these myths are surprising to you, drop a comment down below and let me know which ones you've heard and which ones are surprising for you. Or better yet, if there's a GI myth you want me to bust, Comment down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Hey guys, if you found this video or podcast helpful, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Tap that bell so you never miss out on further videos from your poop guru. And if you know somebody struggling with bloating, IBS, constipation, send this video their way or have them come see us in our practice. Visit levelgastro.com where we can see you today to find out what's going on. Thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you guys on future videos.